When do Puerto Ricans gain voting power in America? The demographics are there, but they're not voting yet. Are they going to vote in 2018, in November? Well, we saw in 2008 and in 2012, the Puerto Rican community was already pivotal in the election of Barack Obama to the presidency. There's over a million of us. Uh, made, I made history as the first Floridian <clears throat> to Puerto Rican descent that was elected. So we have voted quite a bit. And I think that you're going to see a very motivated group because at the same time that the State of the Union was being read, we saw the Trump administration cut food and water benefits <laughs> to over a million Americans in Puerto Rico uh, while they're still facing great tragedy. Within this is the State of the Union address, actually. Where is a policy as a Democrat that you could support from President Trump last night? Well, we were hopeful to hear about infrastructure. Uh, while this was his biggest initiative, uh, the problem was that we heard scant details. He threw out a $1.5 trillion number, but spent less than a minute on his top initiative for 2018. We somehow are going to believe that local governments are going to help fund this along with the private sector, even though a lot of the money's been spent on the tax reform. But yes, we'd like to see that and a lowering of prescription drugs, which uh, was discussed during the State of the Union. Congressman, one of your charms is you grew up in the trenches of Orlando politics and Florida legislature politics. You've been in the nitty gritty of state government. How far is this president removed from the day to day affairs of a given boom state like Florida? Well, we're our economy is based a lot on real estate. There's still a lot of low paying jobs in Florida. And I think that's one of the keys that the president could be making a mistake. He is tying a lot of his fate to the stock market. And while Wall Street's surging, we have Main Street with staggered, uh, unimpressive growth at 2.3 percent last year. Less than half of Americans uh, are invested in the stock market. And so for those forgotten Americans that he talks about so much, they're really still forgotten in this speech. And there's a lot of them in central Florida. Uh, Congressman, Tom and I were in Davos last week when we heard the president speak. It's difficult to say whether he was popular with the billionaires, but everybody wanted to come and listen to the president. How can the Democrats regroup, rethink, and put a leader that is able to go against President Trump for the next presidential elections? Well, our focus is on 2018. We have great candidates across the nation. We have record retirements on the other side, wonderful governors also running. And so I think the key is going to be when you look at Virginia, when you look at New Jersey and you look at some of these special elections, that the president could very well be facing a Democratic majority uh, after <clears throat> 2018 because of this groundswell of support. I mean, who knows whether or not Jimmy Kimmel show even out raided the president's State of the Union last night because people are just not tuned in to a lot of this, these speeches directed at solely his base. Uh, Congressman, how will the Democrats actually deal with immigration? Well, we're hopeful to get a compromise that includes both helping our dreamers out, real border security, dealing with border awareness without having this wall. We're okay with making sure that we have more forces down there. And in addition, we don't have border awareness right now. We don't even know if someone climbs over a fence or climbs over a wall or under a wall because we don't have a lot of technology down there. So we as Democrats are <clears throat> more willing, ready, willing and able to <laughs> get technology there. And in Florida, a wall doesn't help. It's port security, it's Coast Guard security. And we want to see those things funded too. Congressman, within the demographics that you see of Florida, I know they tilted one more district, this time Democrat versus Republican. When does Florida become a Democrat state? Well, I think we'll see potentially one to two, potentially even three seats moving <clears throat> over this next election. Wow. The demographics keep changing. Uh, we had a longtime, very popular representative in South Florida who is uh, Ileana Rosleyton, who is not running for re-election. Those are seats that are majority Democrat that were held by Cuban Republicans because they appealed across the aisle. But that's going to be tough this year <clears throat> with anybody standing with Trump since whether it's Puerto Rico and throwing paper towels or whether it's his treatment of dreamers. It's going to be hard for folks, uh, Hispanics from Florida, to cast any bow for anybody associated with the president.